Good morning. My name is Yaki Silia, and I'm going to speak to you on uh, education in Africa. Uh, the presentation that I'm going to briefly make is about uh, uh, the future of education in Africa. It draws on a, on a large amount of long-term work that the Institute has done. Um, I think it's important first to make the point that education worldwide has improved, uh, particularly for girls. But if we look at the levels of education for adults, that is 25 years and older, Africa is falling behind. Today, African adults on average have five years of education, while in the rest of the world, the average is eight years of education. The problem is that the gap between Africa and the rest of the world has increased by one year from the early 1960s to where we are today. Whereas at the time of independence, average levels of uh, years of education in Africa was two years. By um, uh, uh, 2015, 2016, it, it had increased to a three-year gap between the average uh, education levels, years of education in Africa versus that in the rest of the world. So the challenge that I addressed in the ISS today was what do we do about this fact that education levels are improving but that Africa is slowly falling behind. Of course there are huge differences in Africa. Uh, South Africa has on average 10 years of education for its adults aged 25 years and older. Next door Mozambique only has two years of education for its adults of 25 years and older. So it's important to emphasize that there's huge diversity in this picture. North America has on average 13 years, Europe 11 years, and South Asia 7 years. But the problem for Africa is this uh, declining, uh, this increasing gap between the average in Africa and the average in the rest of the world. So education levels are improving elsewhere, but they are improving more slowly in Africa than is the case anywhere else. Now, it's also important to under, underline that uh, the rate of change has speeded up. Where originally, maybe 30, 40 years, it took about 17 years on average to increase uh, education levels in the adult population by one year, uh, that has reduced. Today, it takes about 11 years. Um, the, one of, some of the reasons why Africa is falling behind and will probably continue to fall behind is that Africa is very young. The median age in Africa is 19. That in the rest of the world is 32 years. So half of African, uh, Africa's population is younger than 19 and half is older than 19. And because we have a young population, that means that the demands on the educational system is uh, very, very high. So that increasing number of pupils um, means that expenditure levels on education in Africa is very difficult to sustain. Now, there are many well-known advantages of education. Um, education reduces or changes your demographics. It reduces fertility rates. It improves health. Um, but uh, if you have too many children, in that way, it can, if more education, particularly more female education, reduces the number of the pressure on your educational system. A second important contribution that education makes is it improves productivity. Uh, the more educated your workforce, the more, the more high value activities they can undertake. If you have uh, grade 12, you can maybe uh, work on um, in a call center. If you have grade three or four, maybe manual labor is the only option that you have. Third, education improves incomes. Uh, therefore, the more educated you, you, uh, you are, the higher your levels of income. Education also improves equity and democracy. A better educated uh, citizenry can make more informed political choices. And finally, education reduces social inequalities. In theory, if people have whatever your background, uh, education can help make up for social stigma and, and other uh, standings, levels of standing in a society. Attaining secondary education for females is particularly important since that has a direct impact upon fertility rates. Family planning could decrease fertility rates uh, significantly 
Um, of course, there are also other factors such as water, sanitation, urbanization, and so on. Our analysis shows that um, many at the at the current at the moment, about 122 million Africans that should be at school are not at school. Um, that situation is particularly bad, um, uh, the, depending on if you're looking at uh, higher or lower income countries. In low income countries, 14% of female uh, uh, pupils are not at school. For lower middle income countries, it's about 48% of age appropriate female uh, 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 children that should be at school are not at school. And if you, um, for upper middle income countries, only 57% uh, graduate from secondary school. Um, so the challenge that we wrote about was really the question of how does Africa catch up? Uh, if the, this gap between education levels in Africa and that in the rest of the world is improving, is, that gap is increasing, how can Africa um, catch up. Of course, the first requirement is uh, more rapid economic growth rates. And that is only uh, more rapid uh, growth rates means that governments can spend more money on education. Reducing fertility through improved health care, um, pr provision of uh, water and sanitation can also help Africa catch up because it will reduce pressure uh, on the educational system. Increased, uh, increased urbanization also very often accords with improved facilities such as water, electricity and educational material uh, access to the internet. More aid to Africa could also help in reducing this gap. Tapping into the digital revolution uh, can help to narrow the gap between Africa and the rest of the world. Recognizing the value of education in itself is important, but I think that our our paper that we spoke about, that we wrote on the, released on the 16th of April, really was that traditional methods of the provision of education, what is known as the Prussian model of education, where there is a teacher in front of a classroom, is not going to solve Africa's educational challenge. Our backlog is so great, and we are falling further behind, that Africa would need to think very creatively about finding solutions to the educational challenges that it faces.